So last video, we took over Motor Leblin and we were supposed to be fighting against relegation. Even the preseason preview telling us that we'd be in 15th place, that's not a massive shock. However, we're very understaffed and we have no head of youth development, even if our chairperson is the director of football. So I needed to get to work and to bring in some staff members in very quickly. We did, however, have a lot of young talent that we could bring into the first team and help with our rule that forces us to play at least one player under the age of 21 that's been born in Poland. But frankly, that's been the case. All players that are on loan at the club will be leaving us, so Jacob Lifts will not be with us next season. Not that I'd have used him anyway, quite frankly, he's not really my kind of player. So, that being said, let's go to the winter break because we've had a lot of matches since we last met. So first things first, transfers. We've made none. We did sell a player though, because he'd already agreed to sign for his current club at the end of his contract. And I thought, you know what? If you're already doing that, I'm just going to sell you now for money. We got 2.5 grand for him. Not a lot of money, but really, it's not the end of the world. The fact he's been playing for them is what shocked me the most. But then we got busy and we brought a load of people in that we needed to bring in, including the head of youth development. So let's go with the staff members we brought in. Well, Nick was the first person we brought in officially as our head of sports scientist. We didn't have a head of sports science or anyone in the sports science department. While he's only an average person at best for the role, it was better than nothing. The personality should not be a factor since, you know, He's not exactly going to be a coach or anything. He's just going to be helping the players stay fit. But other than that, not too terrible. We did bring in Jaroslav Ross as the head of development. He's got a spirit of personality. He's actually currently studying for a Continental A license, which is not a bad sign at all. And I thought, you know what? We've got people who we need to do better with. He does have the formation I'm looking for, but the tactical styles are not what I'm hoping would be the case. He also plays a direct style when I try to play a short passing game. So, not ideal, but the person has to be in spirit is not terrible. And he likes the 4 2 3 1 formation as well, which is one of my other tactics anyway. So, it could have been worse. We also managed to bring in Pavel Pazek as a coach. He's a perfectionist, and I'm hoping his personality will rub off on the players. So, that's great. He's also really, really good. And I had to give him a few bonuses literally few bonuses of promotion from the division 1.7 grand which is the semi-final of the Polish Cup 1.7 grand a top promotion raise rise of 30 percent and allow them to talk to any clubs for any managerial roles but we've gone for two years at least 210 pounds a week given that he is as good as he is I think he's worth the punt and worth the money being spent he also uses the preferred formation and one of the nicer stars I like so he's really good like a sports scientist, worse than a head, but Nanetti is someone we needed to bring in, and we need more strength in depth in the medical department, so we've got him in. We've also brought in the second team manager in Alessio Di Patrillo, and I'm amazed we got him, quite frankly. And I'm also wondering how long it'll be before he gets upset and just walks. He does have the technical style that we like the 4 3 3 vertical tick attacker and the passing as well as a 4-4-2 diamond formation if we wanted to use it. But he's really good. I'm excited we got him. And quite frankly, the fact we did have him and we managed to convince him is a shock to me. Goalkeeping coach, a new one. He had just no coaching class before he arrived. He's now got a National C license and where Paolo is doing quite well and I'm excited to see what he can do. Also professional personality, really good to have around. He's really good at his role. And he's just studying for his coaching badges, left, right, and centre, which is wonderful. We also got Chief Scout, and it's the only scout we've actually bought. And Pietri Lauskowski is definitely going to be the only scout we'll bring in. He is also a coach, which says a lot. But yeah, I bought him for his scouting and the knowledge he brings us. But yeah, he just needs to scout the opposition and see what else we want. And we're good. Okay, I lied. I bought another scout in. Um, that's because Wozenska is also quite good well he's not quite good he's got a great adaptability but he's also a model citizen and knows greece he doesn't have the best knowledge when it comes to judging player ability and player potential but he gives me some other bits and pieces that i like so that's good muslim monarch brought in as the second team's assistant manager again not amazing but it was recommended to bring him in so i did and we also got a second team sports scientists in Swizek. 
Again, not ideal, but it was recommended we brought him in. We also got another 19s physio in Bukowski. And yes, I think he's quite good for the role. More better than average and being paid just £75 a week. I couldn't ask for more than that. We also got another 19 sports scientist and again, not amazing, but only £35 a week. So yes, we brought a load of staff members in and I thought, you know what, let's bring more people in and see what we can do. There was nothing else that's happened in this regard. No, we, that's a lie. We, we let go of two people. Ryman was let go. I tried to actually give him a new deal, but he didn't want the terms I was looking for. We also let go of Masin Machurta, and I didn't give him a new deal because he had a long-term injury at the time and uh, didn't have big matches. I don't think it was good enough for me anyway, so it made sense for me to let him go. So let's go over the matches since we last met. And we won our first game in charge 4-2. And generally, at the time... I was not sure how this team was going to go and react to my formation, to my tactic. It felt like when I started my save in Colombia in the beta, and it just generally told me, yes, we are going to have a few issues every now and again. But then we started winning and drawing and not losing, and I thought, you know what, this is a good start. Like, generally, wasn't expecting to be doing as well as we had been. So when we drew one all. In the next game, away from home against one of the better teams, won 2-0 against Arca, then drew 0-0 against one of the bigger teams again, away from home no less, and then won the next three league games. And then won the next three league games in the league against Stal, Wasovia, and Jagiellonia. I thought, yes, we're doing good. And then we won the Polish first round cup, and then we won in the first round of the Polish cup, and I thought, yes, Corona is easy to beat. And then we lost 2-0 in a live game as a team that was, at the time, bottom of the table. Tysko, Tysko beat us and it was not ideal. And then we lost 2-1 at home to Legnica. So suddenly the formation, well not the formation, suddenly the form felt like it was not going as well as I'd hoped and it made sense that we would struggle a little bit, but I don't know, I, just, I was just a bit annoyed. We then took a 0-0 draw in the next game and then we managed to get three wins in the bounce again. First beating Roche, then being Gonic, and then beating Gorica, and then being Kurika, and I thought we're doing okay again. Then we lost 2-1 at home again, this time to Posiska, and then we took on Kotovic in the cup and beat them 3-0. I thought, yes, we're doing really well. And then we got destroyed 4-0, and this is a game, I'm just going to highlight this game generally. This is a game, we ended the match on 9 men. And before we conceded, we were down to nine men. So, I think you can see why, when you look at the fact we're down to nine men, that I am just not even considering this a match. And I'm just considering a white-off, because how are you meant to survive with nine men against 11? And why did both my players get straight red cards? No idea. But it happened. And I couldn't survive it. So, 4-0 we lost. But I'm considering this to be a one-off match where... It circus us out of our control. Understandable, right? But yes, we then went three games without a win in all competitions. Skyro, we drew one all against, and then we lost one nil away from home against Tunis, and yeah, it was just not ideal. We then lost three nil against a top tier side in the cup against Radomir Radom. So I looked at that and I thought, top tier side in the third round of the Polish Cup, I'm not upset with this. We then won 3 1 against Roby. So Beat them home and away this year. We then lost 2-0 at home against Lebby. And yeah, it's not ideal there. But then we won our last game before the winter break against Arco by gold to nil. So this is a good start, I like to think. Wouldn't you agree? And when I say this is a good start, I mean the fact that we are coming in second place by results between teams. Yes, literally, that's how it's dealt with in this league. And I love it because... It means that you cannot trip over anyone at all. But, and this is a big but, we are only 8 points clear of 13th place. So, anyone from 13th place downwards has a chance to get promoted this year because they have a chance again to get in the playoffs. The teams we have lost against, 6 of them, most of them are not, are not that bad. We've lost to the team that is in 4th. We've lost to the team that is in 5th. We lost to the team that's in 6th. We've also lost to the team that's in 16th and 17th and 13th. But besides that, we've had some good games. We've lost against some big teams. We've also beaten some big teams as well. The fact we are currently 
ahead of third place because we beat them early in the season is testament to that. We've drawn against a team that's top of the table right now is also good. And here's a team that's in seventh and sixth. But again, really, really good. The only downside is the fact we drew against this team. But other than that, it's fine. And we are very, very good. And I genuinely think that for a one-off season, this has been much better than expected. And, in fact, we're no longer 100 to 1 to get promoted and win the league. We're now 25 to 1. So, again, I think that's a testament to how young some of our players are, how good we're doing. And I'm also going to go through the squad rewards. And we're in third place, but not because we're not trying. We are completely ahead of full place in terms of points. We should be getting 200,000 right now. I could just outright say top spot, not catching them. They are got too many players and young teams. Second place, who are coming to the top of the table right now, we're not going to catch them because of international points right now. They've got too many internationals that they can rely on to sh get their points elsewhere. But other than that, I think it's been a really good year so far. Just one problem. It is a, it's a minor problem. This is our youth intake preview by Joseph Ross, and I don't know what to make of this. So everything is C or lower. But we've got a three and a half star intake, a good intake apparently. But we've got one fullback that's full of promise and a centre back that looks promising. But everyone else, everything else is either they lack quality, they don't look like they're going to be good enough, they're not great, we don't have a lot to like, they appear short of the standard, and, or we just don't have anything at all. So I don't know what to make of this. I, I'm going to be honest with you, this could go very badly, and hopefully the youth intake, which we'll see in the next video because i'm just gonna say this in now we've got a gap between december and march that's how big the winter gap is for this division and i can't believe i'm saying that but either way that's a thing to work on and to be expecting do i replace my head of youth development now or do i wait until later because i genuinely believe the reason the intake is not as good as it was is because we had no head of youth development before he arrived that's my reasoning for it. And that's how I think is the reason for the case. And now we've got a head of development. I'd give him some time because he's getting coaching badges as well. And hopefully in a few years' time. Because it takes a few years to get their system in place. Hopefully in a few years' time, things will be better. So what else has happened is that we have actually been able to get a new coaching badge, a National C license now, and we're starting for the National B license as of this moment in time, which is really good. Our attributes are already going up quite nicely, and we have been given a new contract in November, so we are on the verge of doing well and having a good time there. The question is, will they stick with me for that entire time, and can we continue to make the board and the supporters delighted with what we're doing? But... What I'm going to do is end this here. Do you think we can maintain our second place in the league? Or do you think we will not be able to stay in the top six and we'll just slip out of the top six and we'll just be a mid-table top-half team at the end of the season? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. And how do you think we're doing this so far this year? I just hope we can contain this and maintain this sort of run. But either way, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.